This is Ryan Elliott for Boxing Social in association with Betfred. Back in Leeds today, Matt Red Day is away from Laura Warrington too at Headingley with me, Sean O'Hagan. Sean, it's been a while since I've seen you. How have you been? Uh, I've not been bad. We're uh, preparing, training hard, going over everything and we're ready to go Saturday. Let's talk about it then, just a few days out now. Um, I wanted to ask you about preparation for Maurizio Lara this time compared to last time. When you've been in there and seen him, he was a bit more of an unknown quantity last time. He shared the rounds with Josh now. How much does preparation change? Is it, is it a lot more technical when you've seen Maurizio Lara? Um, I think really last time out we, we just didn't do what we are good at. I think we were overlooked. Um, we thought it was just a case. Everybody was talking about Kanzo. Everybody was talking about Kanzo. And meanwhile, this kid's training his heart out. He's got one opportunity in his life, and he's going to take it. And I think we all learned a lesson from that. Um, not to say that we kind of... There were a number of factors, really. A number of factors, you know. There were the pandemic. We were in the midst of the pandemic. Um, we had three dates that kind of fell through, so we'd peaked three times. Um, and then when it came round, it was just a little bit too much that we did, I think. Um, but this time, we're already... Preparation's been good, um, no excuses whatsoever, and we'll put it right on Saturday. It's one thing I wanted to go back to, Sean, both yourself and Joshua Keane not to make excuses after the first fight, but he did have, keep having dates pushed back, and he mentioned it on the media call, as you said it there, he maybe did peak a, a few times, and maybe that took a little bit out of him, but this time round, have you, have you noticed a significant difference in him? There's been a massive difference this time. We've altered things around, we've altered training schedules and patterns around, uh, fight strategy has been changed. Um, and I think this time we're more than ready, absolutely more than ready. Well, let's come on to it then. Um, look, now the dust has settled, Josh said to us on the Zoom call a couple of days ago that he was quite annoyed of himself after the fight. He got carried away. He thought maybe it was even a chance for him to get some rounds in. When the dust did settle and you guys sat down, what, what was it you said to him? Um, to be honest with you, it's one of those things that we're boxing. It's nobody's got given right to step in the ring and come out as the winner. Nobody's. Uh, we've seen it happen before with great champions, you know. We've seen, uh, I mean, AJ is your latest one, isn't it? Dillian White. You know, um, every, every, there's a multitude of fighters that have done the same thing. They've, maybe they've got a little bit lax. They've overlooked the uh, opponent a little bit. And they've had the losses. But, you know, what they do is they come along. They have a little bit of rest, a little bit of healing time. Um, think about it. Then show it all behind them. And what you're left with is... You've just got something that you've got to put right, you know. And it, it, let's not forget, boxing's supposed to be competitive. Um, I know we had a fellow, what they call him, Powell from Daily Mail. Jeff Powell. He, he, Jeff Powell. Well, he's famous for it, isn't he, Jeff Powell? I don't know if he's uh, something wrong with him or not, but he, he made a statement saying that we brought a young slip of a lad from Mexico, making out that he were, he were a, a poor slip of a lad and he'd been brought over to get beat up. It was almost skitty with his interview. That wasn't the case. He'd had 20 odd fights, 16 knockouts. He was a very, very live opponent. Very live opponent. So, you know, let, let's not forget boxing's supposed to be competitive. I think people are reading so much into this thing now where you're supposed to get somebody that you you're almost guaranteed to walk through. But that's not the case, and it shouldn't be like that. It shouldn't be like that. You know, so um, with this, he's a very live opponent. He's proved himself that he belongs at that level. And what we've got to do is put it right on Saturday, and that's what we're going to do. Sean, I know they say the fans can't win a fight for you. The last one was behind closed doors. It's going to be 20,000 and then Headingley cheering him on, though. How much of a boost does that give him? I think it's um, obviously give everybody a little bit of a boost and I think the whole atmosphere itself, I mean, we're, we were locked down in an hotel and we're all in there for a week together. By the time fight comes around, you're just sick of it anyway. You're sick of wearing masks, you're sick of doing tests, you're sick of not being able to nip out here and there, you're all eating together. I think it takes away from build-up. I don't think it's so much of 20,000 fans, I think it's the whole experience that weren't very good. Um, but obviously now... That crowd behind us, um, yeah, it'd be like having a, well, I don't know really, it'll be like having a, an, it's an extra boost in it, it's got to be, it's got to give you a bit of a lift. Whether that's a good thing or a bad thing, I don't know, because all I want him listening to is me, not the crowd, you know.
That's what I was going to say, Sean. It'll be an electric atmosphere, probably quite an emotional atmosphere, so much on the line for Josh. How important is discipline early in the fight and making sure his head is switched on and, and not getting too caught up in, in the occasion in the crowd? You know, I think it's very, very important. Discipline's a major factor in this. And um, I think what we've got to do is we've got to put to one side everything that's happened. We've just got to deal with what's in front of us on Saturday night. Um, but discipline's a major factor. He's got to be disciplined. And we've been drilling that into him. We've gone over it a thousand times now, you know. We don't need to go over it anymore. All he's got to do is just do the fundamentals, but do them well. And we'll get through this fight with no problems. You mentioned last time it was can do this, can do that, thinking about that, that potential fight and the other fights there could be. Even though the, the featherweight division is very exciting right now, I guess there's not a thought between any of you about what could be beyond this. We're not thinking a day after this fight. We're focused on this fight and this fight only, this opponent and this opponent only. I mean, but there again, you mentioned Kanzu. I mean, we saw Kanzu against Lee Wood and not to take anything away from Lee Wood. He's a very, very good fighter. Um, he's good at what he does. But that one, the real Kanzu that were in there, maybe he's done the same as we did. He's overtrained a bit. He's got ready for fights and then he's, they've dropped off and, you know. But that one, the real Kanzu. Um, it was a shadow of the, of the fighter that we know. So, you know, similar, similar situation for them there as uh, we've got with Josh, really. I'm sure he'll come back and I'm sure he'll put it behind him. He's only a young lad and he's a very, very good fighter. Um, but he just didn't seem to get going and that was the same as us, you know. So, for whatever reason, I don't know if he's had COVID or whatever. I mean, we did. Josh had COVID before. Um, we don't know what impact that has on. We don't know enough about it yet. So, maybe that was another factor. But, hey, listen, all that's done now. All we're focused on is we're fit, we're good to go. Saturday night, we're going to put it right. Also on the bill, Maxi Hughes looking to continue his, his unbelievable run of form. He's been in great nick. He's given you a lot of praise after this run he's been on. He's, he's told everyone that will listen how, how much you've helped him and okay. inspired him. How much of a pleasure has he been to work with and, and how do you explain his work ethic and his professionalism as well? You know, with Maxi, he's um, just getting better at every fight. And I mean that, he's really getting better at every fight. But... Let's not forget, Max has only lost the champions. You know, I think maybe he could have been going at the wrong weight, but at the time when Max took that fight, it was an opportunity they couldn't turn down. And his first job was to move him straight to lightweight. He was a lot more comfortable. Um, no dramas do it weight. He's in and around good company. That gave him a bit of a, a bit of a boost. And you know, his confidence. He, Max, he put all his faith in us. You know, I think once he got those wins. His, um, his confidence has gone through the roof. He's a little extra edge now to Max Hughes. And uh, while Strathon's the clear favourite for this fight, don't discount Max Hughes. Don't discount him at all because I think this is his time, you know. And um, come Saturday, I think it's going to be a shock to the system that he's not just coming over here to defend his belt and walk through Max because Max wants it too bad. Uh, I don't think Max Hughes will allow himself to lose. Um, but yeah, it's nice to know he's said a few nice things. He's a quiet, he's a man of few words, is Maxi. Um, very, very few words as it goes. But like I say, we've seen with him lately a little bit of a. He didn't have any spite in his work. There were no little mean streak about him. But now there is. He's got a little bit of, a little bit of viciousness in there as Maxi. A little bit of spite. And let me tell you. Anybody who's not uh, picked up on his, his punching power, Maxi can it. He can really hit. I won't give too much away, um, but he's proved over the last few weeks that he can really hit, you know. So, Max Eels, watch out for him Saturday night. We've only seen one round of Giovanni Straffon over here, albeit a, a very explosive round against James Tennyson. Very dangerous fighter from, from what we've seen. How much have you seen of him away from the Tennyson fight? I've seen lots of him as it goes, and um, I've been in touch with people overseas that have sent us bits and pieces. And um, he's not always made out to be. He's not always made out to be. Again, James Tennyson, there was a little touch of Kanzul there, there was a little touch of Josh Warrington there, because James Tennyson, let me tell you, is a better fighter than we saw against Strathon. A far better fighter than that. And he'll come again, and I hope he does, because I like James, you know. So I think, um, you know, whether it's the pandemic or overtraining, because there's nothing else to do. 
nobody could go to work, so they were all hitting gyms. They've all had fights, um, fight dates that have been cancelled or shoved back. And uh, I think with, with James, he were another victim, you know, so. But listen, no, you, sorry, back to the original question there, I kind of drifted. Um, now I've seen far more than one round. And I have seen him getting beat by a Russian there. Uh, I can't remember his name now. It'll come to me later. But I've seen him getting beat by that Russian guy. And uh, he's good. But trust me, Max is definitely, definitely not out of his depth. You know, so hopefully Saturday night I get my second world champion. And uh, that'll do me. I don't like bad nights at work. Sean, before I let you go, I just wanted to ask you about a couple other fights in the featherweight division. I know you don't want to talk about what's next for Josh, but the division is still moving around him. So the WBA have ordered Lee Wood and Michael Conlon to face each other to try and eradicate one of the belts. What do you make of that as a fight, and who do you expect to win? Do you know what? I like Lee Wood, and Michael Conlon's a pal of ours as well. I can't really sit here and say... I want him to win or I want him to win. And, and you know what? I think it's a good match. I think it's a good match because Michael Connolly, let me tell you, is very, very talented. Very talented. Lee Wood, again, um, another talent, you know, has been overlooked. And I mean, Lee's a fine example of a lad that is being beat by one or two people. He shouldn't have been beat by, but he has. He's come back, he's been patient, he's dug his heels in, he's bit down on his gum shield, and look at that. Look where he is now. Fantastic for him, absolutely fantastic for him. I wouldn't like to call on Conlon and um, Lee Wood at this stage because I do like them both, I really do. Um, if I'm gonna, if you're gonna, if you're pushing me on it, you're pushing me on it. I think Conlon's got just a, a tiny edge, just a tiny thing in his favour, you know, that is very, very versatile. He's as tricky as Lee Wood. And when I say that, I, I, I'm just going to swear towards Conlon. I'm just going to say that that little bit of youth as well with Conlon. I think they're very, very evenly matched. And if I'm going to have to separate them, it's purely by a little bit of youth alone. That's all. And the final one I had to get your thoughts on, Sean. Um, Josh's old belt was contested for at Fight Camp. We saw Kid Galahad a, a spiteful performance against Jazza Dickens. What do you make of his performance? And was that sort of similar to what you expected pre-fight? Do you expect it to be a bit more close? Yeah, there were a few little things in there that he did with us, standing on toes, that sort of thing. Referee didn't really pick up on it again. Didn't really win a world title, did he? It were a vacant title. Um, mentioning our name quite a lot again, so what, what I'll say is this, that we fought him three times, we beat him three times. He might have won a, a title that really were meaningless to us. You know, what sort of organisation uh, reinstates some days who's just been beat? You know what I mean? It was scored, it was judges scored, it referee were there. Oh, we're all in his favour up night as well, but referee Phil Edwards there. I know we're not supposed to mention names, but terrible performance by Phil. Um he shouldn't have been being fighting for it. My thoughts on that are that you know, well you know what it is anyway, don't you? My thoughts on that is that it should be a lifetime ban. So he shouldn't have been fighting for it anyway. So I don't really show any interest in IBF now. You know, we've lost a bit of... Just in my opinion, it's just they've just kind of cheapened the belt, you know what I mean? So that's my thoughts on that one. All right, Sean, well, I caught you just as you're off for a brew, so I'm going to let you get on your way. Thank you for always speaking to Boxing Social. I'm sure we'll catch you very soon. <laughs>